Welcome, everybody. My name is Nick Cabrera. I'm the co-founder of Open Future World, and I'm delighted to welcome you here live from Marbella, where the Open Banking World Congress is taking place. Uh, we've had a, a fabulous two days of content, networking, and an opportunity for people to meet each other after two years of COVID. And I'm delighted to have with me uh, two great guests. We've got a lot to talk about. I'll start with Hugh Davies, who's one of the co-founders of Ozone API. Hello, Hugh. Hi, Nick. And Thiago Aguilar, yeah. <laughs> I got that correct, who is the uh, head of platforms at Techman in Brazil. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Great to see yeah. you both. Now, we've got you guys together because mm -hmm. clearly there's a partnership we can see uh, between Techman and Ozone. So I thought we could kick off the discussion by list hearing each one of you first to explain what you do as an entity first and then let's talk a bit about you know how you met how the partnership right. built up and see where we go so Hugh tell us first about Ozone yeah sure so um, at Ozone API we uh, provide a technology platform that helps banks and financial institutions around the world um, deliver their open banking and open finance API so we help make sure they deliver API's that perform really well align with the various different standards around the world and give them everything they need to, of course, comply, but have all of the tools so they can then turn it into a channel that really drives their business. Fantastic. OK, so that's clearly understood. So Techban, okay. tell us about Techban. Yeah, Techban. So Techban is a 40-year-old company in Brazil. It's a huge company. So we run the ATM network in Brazil called Banco 24 Horas. So the biggest, actually, ATM network in the world in terms of transactions. We have 145 million clients every year, 40 million clients every month. And so we are connected to more than 150 financial institutions. And then some years ago, we thought, you know, open banking is coming to Brazil. Uh, we are already connected, and so maybe we can deliver this uh, to our clients. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, company doing interesting technology, somebody providing services, which sound cash-based as yeah. well, with, with yeah. cash machines. So, yeah. how did the connection, how did it happen? Yeah, well, you, you actually you're to blame for it, <laughs> because we actually we met in 2019. Right. In, in the Open Banking World Congress. So, mm -hmm. yeah, well, actually, I, I Googled them and, you know, Hugh and Chris, and uh, I was, uh, so my departments uh, take care. We, we, we could have said our eyes met over a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it would be a little bit there, awkward, but, but <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyways, so my, the, the department that I run is uh, uh, innovation and digital. So I look for trends and what's going on in the world so, so we can do in TechBa. Mm -hmm. And then I started following up, you know, PSD2 in 2018. And that's something that's, of course, will happen in Brazil. It was supposed to happen, right? And then uh, I started mm -hmm. just searching and I crossed uh, Chris Michael, Hugh, and I set up a meeting actually when in 2019, right. so that's okay. when happened. And then I had a, a lecture in, in this meeting uh, with Hugh and Chris just explaining what, what open banking was. Mm. Uh, and then I said, well, I think we can do that. So, <laughs> so, that's so that was 2019, and 2019, here we yeah. are, 2022. Yeah. A couple of years Three. of COVID in the middle. Yeah. How, what are you guys doing together now? What's, what's the result of all of this? Yeah, it, it's been a really interesting journey. And, and as you say, we've had COVID in the middle. Mm. So we've been building a transatlantic partnership um, with a complete lack of ability to travel <laughs> and be in the same room. So we, mm. I mean, we started that before COVID. We've obviously been continuing to meet up since, but yeah, there's a huge amount that happened. Um, and for us, we're really focused on the technology and we need to partner with companies who are the real influencers in their market that have got the distribution that know how the market works know all of the banks and 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 Techban have been the perfect partner um, from from that perspective so between us what we've been trying to do is just make sure as open banking and open finance comes in in Brazil that we're ready to help the banks and financial institutions so we we spent a lot of time just getting getting ready, getting the technology ready for the, mm -hmm. uh, for the market, making sure that we were getting the message out there that TechBan were the open banking enabler for the market, um, driving hackathons and all of these sorts of things. But then 
it was last year that the market really started. So the, the first phase, second phase, third phase of open banking came in. We're now moving into open insurance and the broader open finance phase. So, yeah, it's really exciting. It's been a, it, it's been a hectic and frenetic race to make sure that we're continuing to, to meet all of the different regulatory deadlines, to help all of the banks get live and get through conformance testing yeah. and all of those things. But now it's been a, it's been a great experience. Yeah, well, and one thing I have to mention is actually we were the first uh, platform in Brazil, was, was on Antecba, to go live, you know, right. with like, the first client. So, you know, the first bank went live, you know, in the first phase of open banking in Brazil, it was, you know, our client. So right. it was a great achievement because, you know, this is, uh, of course, we do, you know, we manage cash and we're, we're a company, mm. 7,000 people. And this digital arena, it's, it's new. And uh, so we had to build, you know, all the team, you know, the commercial department, and uh, it was a huge journey. And now we have a couple of dozens of uh, clients, and so I think it's a great, great uh, success. So, okay, tell us a bit about what exactly is the bank, what are the banks offering their clients through what you're doing? So what are the benefits that end users are seeing from open banking in Brazil? Yeah, well, open banking in Brazil, it's, it's now more of a infrastructure. So I think we still have like a couple of years to go in terms of building the infrastructure. We're seeing now some use cases like, uh, you know, uh, uh, one, bank's, uh, uh, one bank doing a PFM for, the, for its clients and another bank doing, you know, payment initiation. Mm. But uh, most of the, you know, we have huge volumes of API calls in open banking in Brazil. Uh, last, last month it was like 240 million API calls, right. you know, 5 million consents. But until now, it's more, you know, the tech people or the early adopters, you know, trying to understand what it is. So we're still to see, you know, some relevant use cases. Uh, so uh, we're just, you know, empowering banks to do it. And now they're building the solution. I think the schedule was really tight. So the central yeah. bank put a really tight schedule and all the teams trying to catch up. Mm -hmm. And now they're like, okay, let's see what we do for our clients. Yeah. So we're yeah. starting to see PFM and payment initiation. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, Tiago was talking about some of the numbers there. I guess it's, it's straight out of the back of the, the first phases of implementation. So it's probably where the UK was mm. sort of three or four years ago, but it's developing so much faster. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, think, I think Brazil will very quickly overtake the UK as kind mm -hmm. of the blueprint for open banking and open finance. It's a much broader scope. The scale of the opportunity is so big. Um, and it's interesting. And one of the things we're talking about here as well is what's happening in other markets around the world. And we're, we're seeing as each new market comes along, because we're helping banks in a number of different parts of the world, the regulators, the market, they're all looking to build on the learnings, move faster, move better, get to those end customer outcomes and benefits uh, far more quickly. And we're definitely seeing that in Brazil. But what's interesting is, and I, you know, we've been talking about open banking since 2016. Um, but I must admit, I have never seen such a consistent stream of news of technology, innovation, activity in any other country except Brazil. Yeah. And it's fascinating because um, there's always been a perception, of course, that whatever was happening in the UK was going to lead the way. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, we're now discovering, of course, that Brazil, a country that seems to have a a forward-thinking regulatory drive is really pushing, pushing the drive forward. I mean, do you see regulation going beyond open finance into other sectors as well? Do you? Work yeah. Well, now, of course, in this uh, new open arena or open X. So we have open insurance, which is another regulator, and then uh, now we just came out this new resolution from the central bank saying, okay, you guys have to interoperate open insurance and open mm. banking. And we have the platform, we have clients in open insurance and open banking, so we're doing this, you know, trying to come up with the standards. And the central bank is asking for contribution, so how that will interoperate. And now we have the people in the health, you know, uh, mm -hmm. department, ministry, talking about open health. So we already had some panels, discussions about open health, so right. let's see how it goes. I think Brazil is it's really interesting. The, uh, people are, you know, adopt innovation yeah. uh, really fast. So we saw that with uh, instant payment and, uh, and and the financial system in Brazil was always, you know, really, you mm -hmm. know, ahead and uh, always really technological. So wonderful. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, 
I mean, these yeah. things go much faster than we think, don't they? It really has. We have yeah. run out of time. But All I right. just want to say a big thanks to Hugh Davis, yeah, Jaguar Aguilar. <laughs> thank you very much for joining us. All right. And we'll see you hopefully this time next year back in Marbella. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you very thanks much for joining sure. me. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah.